everyone! Today I got a very special guest for us. It's Danny. Hello. Danny is my acro partner. We actually got together to warm up and stretch before our dress rehearsal. We are like very bedazzled today um, since we performed together in the same act. And we had some extra time and we thought, why not? Why not, while we're looking all dolled up and pretty, to do some a challenge, a blind test and introduction Danny to niche scents. So she pulled several scents from my collection without my knowing. I'm gonna close my eyes and we're gonna follow the blind testing. The only thing that I know about them, that they're from my collection. But since my collection is like 400 plus bottles, I'm not gonna be surprised if I like have absolutely zero reference whatsoever. Danny, can you tell us more about like your story with scents? Like where, what's your benchmark for, for fragrances and perfumes? Okay, up until I started experimenting with your collection, Victoria's Secret in the oh, mid 2000s. Uh, I loved buying scents there, knew nothing about the notes or whatever. I just sniff it, oh, I like this one, this is sexy. And you know, that was about it. And then um, once I had children, I kind of moved away from using scents more often because I was just home all the time. And now I'm reawakening that interest and I'm excited to explore your collection a little bit more. Oh my God. I am both thrilled and terrified. It's gonna be, <laughs> it's gonna be quite interesting if I don't recognize anything at all. Okay, all right. So I'm gonna close my eyes. I'm gonna show the bottle to them and spray it onto pieces of paper. And when you're done, you can hide the bottle. Or should you start? You can start if you have an impression. To me, this is very like skin like. Um, spiciness, I feel spiciness here, but it's very soft. It's like very finely milled. It's just something like I, I, imperceptible almost. It's like so finely woven together. To me, it kind of almost feels like a skin sebum, like skin oil. Sometimes like your skin after a moisturizer smells like that. Maybe lavender? That's what I feel. What about you? I'm getting like um, baby oil, baby powder, that type of scent. Like very clean, very soft something vaguely floral, vaguely spicy, but nothing that I can really define. Yeah, it's very demure. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. So usually when I do blind tests, I ask people or myself several key questions. So first you try to describe it, right? You're trying to guess if you can have any kind of notes or any accords that you can tell that they're there. Then the next one is, do you think this is something mainstream, which is called designer, like something you can buy anywhere? Or do you think it's niche? It's like, oh, that's like, what would Macy's have that? Oh, okay. You know, like, I feel like maybe older designer scents could mm -hmm. have something like that, but nothing new. Like these days, the trends are very syrupy, very screaming. If it's fresh, that it like drills into your brain. If it's sweet, that it just like covers your teeth with sugar. Mm -hmm. This is so soft that I wanna say it is niche. At the same time, there are brands like Iron, Jo Malone even, well, too complex for Jo Malone, in my view. I don't know, I'm split. Certain, maybe older designer, what do you think? Mm -hmm. I also think it's like right on the line. Like I can't picture modern Macy's counter having this, but at the same time, it does have something that feels like it should be classic. Yeah, um, yeah. Like it, it, it feels like oh, uh, maybe I've, I've heard something like this, mm -hmm. but it wasn't recently. Yes. Yeah. It's very classic. 
it's either one of those like Estee Lauder, I don't know, or you know, like some older, old school brands that can afford to keep a wide range of fragrances on the market. Mm -hmm. Like it comes like very expensive to keep all of your line online without like reformulating or deprecating anything. Or it's niche that is reinterpreting the classics. Mm -hmm. Okay, I would say, <laughs> I'll say niche. All right, next question. Do you think it's expensive or affordable? Oh, that's another interesting I'll question. I'll say like affordable, we can say affordable anything less than $60. Mm -hmm. Like mid-range would be between 60 and I would say 150. And okay. anything above 150 per bottle, I would say is expensive. Okay. Though in modern times, would go with thinking it would be more affordable I guess because it doesn't smell super complex to me so that makes me feel like there would be fewer ingredients but I don't know if that's anywhere close to accurately how this works I would put it in mid-range because some of the like cheaper affordable options like clean for example you can buy it in every drugstore Demeter they make a lot of these kind of like one two three notes very recognizable easy scents they can make like a pina colada scent you know what I mean like mm -hmm. or like uh, musk cashmere and that's just pretty much like a scent of an expensive uh, dryer sheet oh okay yeah. kind of like to make you feel uh, that you're just so yeah but those I find are a little bit less well-rounded mm -hmm. they're a little, a little bit more straightforward this is just so soft and it's like everything here is so it's like a glossy ball of all of these notes it's hard to even pull any one of them out mm -hmm. to say what it is so that makes me think that it's mid-range i would say this probably costs around a hundred dollars okay that would be my guess all right any other any other thoughts would you wear this I mean, honestly, I might. Not every day, but if I wanted to feel like really, really cozy and just get under a blanket or something, it has that very classic, familiar, almost like you've smelled this somewhere before. Yeah, in the it's past like a warm sense. hug in yes. the afternoon. Yes, but I don't think I would wear it for a night out or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Agree. I mean, I would definitely wear it because I know it's mine. <laughs> <laughs> on, on, upon like a fresher look, Mm -hmm. I think same. I would wear it, but it doesn't seem to me like the most kind of go-to perfume. It's almost like it has it has a mood to it. Yes. I All right. So. Okay. Reveal the bottle. Okay. Let's see what it is. This is it. Oh. Okay. This is niche. This is Histoire de Parfums. French niche, very conceptual. Oh. And you see, like they make the bottles like a half of a book. And if you oh. buy like a full size, it will be a full book. And if you buy several, it's like a bookshelf. Oh, that's lovely. I yeah. did see a little shelf of these in your yep. cabinet. I now do I understand have a bit why. Of a <laughs> it's they are like it's a fetish, really. Like the way that they everything that they do is very conceptually well designed. And that's why I love them. So this is 1725. If my memory doesn't betray me, it's dedicated to Casanova, the year. Oh, okay. So, and I think, oh, the notes are right here. Bergamot, citron, pamplemousse, reglisse, I don't remember how to say it. I guessed lavender, yay. Not that many, vanille, okay, some tall, cedar, amber. Not real spices. Mm -hmm. The only thing that I guess here is lavender. And vanille. I can get that now, now that I'm mm -hmm. hearing it. Okay, all right, so the price for it is mid-range toward higher end. It's between 100 and 200. Okay. And it's definitely niche. You won't find that at Macy's. Interesting. But it does remind you of something. It does. Right? Yes. It's just like it's an homage to something. All right. All right. Let's move on. That's a very high class start, my dear. <laughs> well, and like, I guess I'm you, learning more about your tastes as well. You have a high class collection to pick from. <laughs> what can I say? Okay. I mean, I, I got a bunch of things. Yeah, like I have even some like super sassy, juicy, even I would dare say slutty scents. Oh. Yeah. 
I'm just curious, did you pick the ones that you liked or all over? Even like the ones that shocked you and the things that you'd never ever wear? Um, a few that I liked and a few that just were interesting. After I smelled it, I was like, this is, this could be fun to, to guess, you uh -huh. know? So it's a mixture. I mean, I don't think I picked anything that I outwardly disliked at first sense. Okay. But, you know. Ready? Here you are. You did hide the bottle, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes, this time. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I think I'm gonna say that a lot. That sounds familiar. Damn it! Oh my god, <laughs> I feel like I should be able to guess it, but I'm blanking. Okay, and yet another, I would call that demure. I would call that very understated elegance. Mm -hmm. And again, it's semi-powdery, semi-sweet. It's kind of... Let me actually compare them. They do share a lot in common. Mm -hmm. But this one is much more floral. Yeah, there's definitely a bright concoction of florals here. And what is it? I think it's lilac. It reminds me of the lilac bush that we had outside of my house when I was you a kid. You know, you're right. It actually yeah. does smell like lilacs. Mm -hmm. Oh, and it's kind of soapy. Mm -hmm. Then... I should know what it is. Just, <laughs> I just today lamented on Instagram about like running out of lilacs. Because it's my like a workout scent, especially if I want to like be creative. Oh, I love that. Well, you have this bottle right here. Yeah, it's just soapy. Okay, 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 okay. I'm gonna make a guess. I'm okay. gonna make a guess. I think it is Salvador Dali, Dali Light, which is a very affordable, uh, but still niche scent. Um, not, a, not easy to find. You mostly have to hunt it down online or get a sample from me. Did I? Did I? It is Dali. Ah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, that's the ding! I guess that one right. Yay! Soapy lilacs. I love it for linens. Oh my oh, god. Yes, I bet. Like it's just before you go to bed or like 10 minutes before you go to bed, and you just like just two sprays and then just like you land there it's divine. Oh yeah, that sounds amazing. So divine. It reminds and it's me of like summertime. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's very affordable. Nice. Oh, I like that one though. Yeah. Okay. What did, well, I didn't I think I didn't let you speak at all. What did you oh. think? I mean, bright, summery, floral, definitely got the soapy after you said that for sure. I just, I guess it was like a rush of memories for me mm -hmm. of the flowers, you know, you pick the lilacs off the lilac, lilac bush and put them inside, and the summer breeze coming through. I almost said rose, but after you said lilacs, I'm like, yes. Yes. Obviously. Yes. Lilacs. Very strongly, more so than I think any other lilac fragrance that I've smelled. Mm -hmm. It smells like the real flowers. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. I'm excited. Okay. You know, I do have uh, one more lilac. It's En Passant by Frederick Mal. I'll show you later. Okay. It's more watery and um, about 10 times more expensive. Okay. <laughs> And I wore it to the gym today. Why not? <laughs> no. Life is for living. $300 <laughs> spent them out in 15 minutes. It's just like, at this point, I've been like telling about this everywhere on every corner. Scent anchoring does work. Absolutely. Just pick what you want to associate with certain activity or even a certain mood. And the moment you smell that, it will start working. All right. Let me know when we're ready. Okay. Here you are. All right. Dude, you have a very sophisticated, I dare say, English taste. Do I? Okay. Yes. It's very, like a lot of this stuff, it's, it's this very like sophisticated, almost like Jane Austen of florals. There's always oh. a little bit of this like nuanced, delicate details. Well, that checks you out. chose from a good collection. Yes. You know? Very good collection. I don't, everything that I sniffed was interesting to me. I didn't smell anything in there that I disliked. But you, know, well, you, you didn't dig, dig deep enough. Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> there are things there that are rather shocking. But I'll like I'll, I'll ease you to them gently. Okay. Okay. All right. Number three. Oh my God. It's um, more golden to me. It's like mm. sunny. The definite florals and it's kind of feels to me okay 
I think it's definitely niche. I cannot imagine seeing that at Macy's or Sephora. Mm -hmm. Well, Sephora has sometimes interesting brands every once in a while. I dare say it reminds me of Istuar de Parfums, the golden bottle, like Veni, I think it's called. So maybe it's wood, like a little bit of woodiness in it. Like, does, yeah. it, does it make you feel like it's like dry wood? Yes, I kind of got, what popped into my head was like old-fashioned circus with the cedar pellets on the ground and oh, that wow. type of feeling. Old oh, circus, tell me more. Yes, you know, with, well, where the tents are made out of fabric and, you know, it's literally placed on the dirt and they have animals and, you know, old-fashioned popcorn and all the things. Mm -hmm. Definitely not in this century. Yeah, I yeah I cannot see any classics like any big brands or designer brands making something like that. Though Gucci in the last ten years has done like like for example their memoir is such a niche scent. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised they released it to to the masses. But I don't think anything in the last I dare say fifteen years that is mainstream designer has anything to do with this profile. I would call it niche and I would give it probably, I would say it's expensive. I would say it's like 150 plus. What I guess because also niche and expensive. Hmm? Uh, yes, I would also say niche and expensive. Okay. Circus though, interesting. But you know, not just the circus itself, but like the glamour, the, the performance, glamour. you know, like us. You see, <laughs> in like, the olden days. When you said that something popped up, I feel like it's sparkly. Mm -hmm. It has a little bit of this kind of like, not fizziness, but like it's just sparkly a little bit. Yeah, like that little hint of glamour, but mm -hmm. the, the woodiness, the, the realness mm -hmm. at the same time. Oh, please let it be Histoire de Parfums, the gold one. Yes, no, no, yes. It is. This one. Oh my god! I can't believe it! I was so wrong. This is a very romantic floral and this is a fresh French niche with pedigree. This is Rancé 1795. This is where the brand was established. Mm -hmm. in, in the end of 18th century, there was no real modern chemistry. Most of perfumery were just various mixtures of essential oils, essentially like all kinds of concoctions and chemists and uh, medical professionals were making them. Oh. So Rancé, if I'm not mistaken, was one of the suppliers for the royals. Oh. Yep. Hortensi. Ah, oh, that's, again, there is a history to this perfume, but I don't remember. Wow. You know, I was, I think I started saying booty and I anchored myself to, to the, the different fragrance that I was thinking, but this supposed to have pink pepper, if I'm not mistaken. It's oh. supposed to be very romantic and it is very romantic. Oh, it is, yes. Definitely romantic. Okay, all right. Gosh, we are on a very sophisticated path here. Yes, we are. I love Excited. it. Excited. All right, next one. I only have one fragrance by Rance and I keep wanting to get more and it's just never the right time. I'm pretty much just waiting for me to like DM me and say, Maria, the ambassador. This is their chance. <laughs> now they know, know you are. Right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do this. I would not oppose to that. I, I am a sucker for like brands that have pedigree, that have history. I really um, often, almost purposefully avoid anything too new. Because I feel like every idea, every brand needs to settle down a bit before they really get to their best creations. All right, ready? Let's try it. Yes. Mmm. Okay. That is. Do I own this? <laughs> that is. <laughs> That's very bright. I think you can like totally use it against like cockroaches. You know, like anything. Oh my. <laughs> They want to just extinguish competition in the room. It is, wow. I own this. It, it was in your cabinet. <laughs> Unless someone else left it there. It is yours. God. That is so aggressive. It's almost like, a, to me, some kind of like, it's something you can find in, in a paint shop. I don't know. 
My goodness, no, I definitely got softer vibes than that. <laughs> what do you get? Oh, like, well, I thought of, um, I think it's clary sage, like some of the essential oils. And I, I don't know, like, yes, it's clean, but like playful and herbal kind of. It is definitely herbal. There's yeah. some kind of herbaceous feeling to it. Oh my god, I'm blanking so hard. I don't even have a single idea. This, though, in its profile, could be older designer. To me, it kind mm -hmm. of um, sends me back to the, almost the 80s. That's the time when the perfumes were... <laughs> I almost get um, like pine from it too. Christmas is the word that came to mind, yeah. but you know, like pine trees. Maybe there are some like, like resinous something, something in it. Mm -hmm. I'm shocked that I own this. I'm even more shocked that I probably worn this. To me, it's like so bright and so piercing. It's so vivid. It is vivid though, compared to a lot of these others. Yeah, it's yeah much maybe it's subtle. just the contrast. Maybe. Okay, it could be niche because, ni well, I feel like saying that something is niche is almost a cop-out these days because mm -hmm. in the last five years the niche perfume brand world grew, like exploded exponentially so they make anything weak sophisticated old school new school molecular perfumes anything can be found in niche but to me this smells very 80s so i would place my bets on either niche conceptual niche even or something like really old, like from the 80s. That's all I can say. What were you saying? Oh, you know, I honestly would have thought maybe, um, I forget, whatever the opposite of niche is, like more mainstream. Mainstream, like yeah. Macy's. Yeah. Okay. Gosh, what is it? It is. Oh! This one. <laughs> oh, 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 oh my god. This is raspberry syrup with musks. Oh, okay. And actually, you are right. It is, though it's a niche brand, it's a contemporary niche brand, and they are sold in Sephora and oh. many, in many other stores. Okay. <laughs> so they are kind of mainstream now. So yeah, this is uh, it's kind of raspberry syrup with a lot of like strong sour musk. I get that now, for sure. Do you feel the raspberry? Now that you mentioned it, yes. The um, the bottle just looked pretty, so I grabbed it out. And you know, actually, one thing that I got right, that Ju Juliet has a gun. Did I say it? Juliet has a gun, Mad Madame, that's what it was. Their mainstream line that looks like this is very, like, has very potent, kind of bright, piercing scents. Okay. They put a lot of Ambroxan, that's a ingredient that makes sense scream a little bit but they are very long lasting too because of i it. can imagine that's so strong okay i do own it i do wear it i am just <laughs> blown away that i had no recollection of it whatsoever blind but i think compared to those few we just did maybe. that's a pretty big contrast maybe that was it it might have been well, all right, let's charge forward. <gasps> I am shocked. Like, I, I need to like reset my brain. I'm so <laughs> shocked. <laughs> all right, here's the next one. All right, number five. <laughs> this vague recollection. Oh my God, dementia is setting in. Oh. This is good though, I like mm -hmm. this one. It's this is very, very nice. deep reach and I feel like this one definitely has some kind of like an herbaceous liquor, you know, like some yes. those like European liquors like from Hungary or something where they they put so much in with alcohol and then it just like a drop of it makes everything smell like, I don't know, woods, moss, herbs. So what is it here? Oh, something very herbal, like I wanted to say rosemary, but maybe not rosemary. That might be a little too spicy, but it's almost minty. Like, mm -hmm. oh, you know, like sometimes those like old school uh, warm up um, creams or not even creams, like, like so waxy that oh. you would put to like when you when you have like a sore back. Yeah, uh, yeah, a lot. So um, they're based on like all kinds of pines, herbs. Is it camphor? Camphor, probably, yeah. Yeah, definitely. And 
maybe some wintergreen almost? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. There's, yeah, like there's almost some kind of like gin in here. Mm, yeah, yeah. So juniper, maybe? That's what's in Could be right? juniper, yeah. And it's sweet at the same time. This is not like a flowy and light type of juniper perfume. This has, right. it's very heavy, very substantial. Yes. I am again blown away that I own this. It's almost like I'm rediscovering my own collection. I would find that this is kind of a risque purchase for me. Like I don't necessarily see myself wearing that, but I clearly own it. Interesting. Ah, oh, I think it's niche. I cannot see Macy's selling anything like this. Yeah, I would agree with that. This does not seem like Unless anything Unless it's one of those brands like L'Occitane or, you know, like the ones that actually make skincare. Mm -hmm. You know, like L'Occitane has some fragrances that are more herbaceous and a little bit more natural-esque. But otherwise, I think it's niche. This is... And again, it's something from childhood. Mm -hmm. I guess everything is from childhood. Everything, all the sense memories mm -hmm. really are. Okay, um, price, what would you say? I think it would be expensive, but that's my untrained nose. Yeah, I would say so. Again, like, it's so rich, I bet it's long-lasting, and I, I have no idea who that could be. Honestly, zilch. No idea. Okay, let's do it. Okay, let's do it. Here it is. Oh my god! Okay, this is... Mwah. This is very niche. This is Swiss niche from Switzerland. Oh. I actually ordered it from Switzerland. Oh. This is a brand called Andy Tower. That's his name. He's a master perfumer. And actually, you know, we guessed it, but didn't we didn't land in the right space. This is Accor du Désert. Pardon my French. I don't speak French. This is the heart of the desert. So this oh. actually is supposed to be the smell of a heated sand at the end of the day. Oh, I actually love that. It's it's yeah. definitely very spicy, very sweet. Mm -hmm. But you know, before you pointed it out, like I didn't feel it as herbaceous. I didn't feel it as like piney or juniper, but now I can't shake it off. It's also supposed to have a um, leather note in it. I mean, yeah, I can find that now. But more like, to me, like more rough le leather, mm -hmm. like something very thick. Yes. And now it gets sweet. Now that I know what it is, it's much sweeter and more seductive to me. But before it was like, whoa, like I would say this is like a niche for guys even. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. Like I could see that this could be marketed toward men mm -hmm. as a like a masculine gourmand. That's so cool. Oh my, I own this. <laughs> it's mine. It's wow. lovely though. Like I can't stop smelling it. I, I'll give you a decan. This is like super cool stuff. Highly Thanks. recommend you guys try. Again, like there's like a special pleasure to try niche from different countries. And I think this is one of the really good niche brands that Switzerland has to offer. All right. I really want to try his newer stuff because allegedly, as they say in the forums, his style of blending has changed. You know, it's like in fashion, like somebody becomes known for certain aesthetic mm -hmm. and with time it's a like, double-edged sword. You want to give people what they want and people want more of what they know and yet they get bored so quickly. So allegedly Andy has started kind of trying new things and I'm so excited to see how he tries to like spice it up and yet stay true to himself. All right, All next right. one. So this is number six. Yes. Hmm. Okay, I do believe that I own that, but I doubt that I wear it that often. <gasps> what does it smell like to you? Hmm, it's very... Clean, but there's something else there for sure. Like, I can't tell if it's for. I mean, I'm almost getting leather or suede or something from this. Yes, and I would also say to me, it's like very dry, like box almost. 
almost mm-hmm. like a pe- paper, but not the yeah, paper. paper. Absolutely. No, we do. I mean, you can sometimes yes. get paper <laughs> when you spray something on it. Yeah. But this is more than it. So it's very dry to me. Very kind of powdery, peppery, like old dusty books. Mm-hmm. Like ink almost. Mm-hmm. So if it is powdery and dusty, that probably it has suede notes in it. Mm-hmm. Probably iris. To me, it's very niche. I would be blown away if this is something affordable or designer or mainstream. To me, it's like so niche. This is something that I would expect. I'm trying to guess who that could be. Skin on Skin by L'Artisan Parfumeur. Um, large sample from more is like one of like OG French niche brands. They think they started in, I'm afraid to say 70s. Okay. It could be. Uh, it actually also could be uh, Histoire de Parfums. Again, I'm blanking right now what they're, uh, they have a fragrance that's devoted to Hemingway. Oh, that's a writer. Yeah, like it's like just by association, I would think that. But that is supposed to be way more peppery, a little bit more spicy. Mm-hmm. This to me it doesn't seem that spicy. No, I don't get spicy from this either. It's charming, and it's kind of a little bit like a like a woman who's like a librarian. Mm-hmm. Yes, the. You know what else? The dusty and the kind of vintagey feel of it. It could be Istuada Parfum Olympia hole that has like a red sticker on it. And that one is devoted to the old school uh, performance holes, you know, with like very heavy, rich, velvety curtains mm-hmm. and all that yes. old glamour. Yes. I get that. From the this more too. I smell it, the more I think it's an Olympia hole. Am I wrong? It's this one. Yes, I got the musical two. one. Yes, <laughs> Olympia musical. Yes, uh, discontinued. Uh, I checked with them; they're not making it anymore. And it's like, indeed, for those of you who like wish they lived in a better era, it's truly a very unique. It's I wouldn't say that everybody's cup of tea, but those of people who just almost wish they could live, you know, in the and and work in the 15th century library somewhere in Milan or Rome. Oh, what, would you wear it though? Um, again, probably not every day, but on, mm-hmm. on an occasion in the right mood, I feel like it could really enhance that, um, that dream. What kind of vibe did you, did you get out of it? I mean, honestly, when I first sniffed it, I was getting, because I could see the label too, mm-hmm. that idea of the old theaters and like very old, old mm-hmm. performance of any sort, like um, the outdoor theaters with Shakespeare mm-hmm. or even, you know, uh, like a Victorian era or something mm-hmm. where people would be inside, like you said, with the big velvet curtains. Oh, yeah. Yes. I like when I want to like bum around in the house and like, and I want, I like, sometimes I just want to feel like one of those broke artists you know like yes. I'll put, like my like chunkiest layer chunkiest sweaters put like huge socks that are worn almost to the ground like a scarf well when i lived up north <laughs> no, no, not yes. in florida uh, and i would just like walk around with my notepads feelings like you know what <laughs> yeah nothing is true anymore the art is dead but I'll find, I'll find myself again. Yeah, like, it's just very bohemian. Yes, bohemian is the perfect word for that, I think. Yes. Oh my god. Two, All right. I guess two. All right. Yes. I guess considering that it's my collection, <laughs> I could have done better. All mm. right. Next one. Okay, this is number seven. This is number seven. Ah! Oh, that's cheerful. Mm-hmm. It's like bright, almost screaming a little bit, but like it's so bright, mm-hmm. it just makes me happy. Yes. It's, oh, you know, it's like hard candy almost, like the old school hard yeah. candy, like the... Okay, then I have a guess, but you tell me first what you think it is. 
Oh, it's cheerful, like immediately it makes your spirits lift. Mm -hmm. There's something, oh, maybe it is like candy, but it's very like, it is like childhood. Or yeah, something like very... it's old school hard candy, the one yeah. you like to suck on and it was like sour sweet. Yeah, this is like innocent, cheerful, small pleasures. Something slightly spicy maybe, just slightly in the background. Some kind of flower, vanilla maybe, but also in the background. I like that it has layers. The more mm -hmm. I smell it, the more I find. Okay, it is definitely niche. I do not see any designer house coming up with something like that. And it's their loss. Any other thoughts? Mm, would you wear it? Yeah, we'd probably wear it. For what occasion? You know, if I was feeling happy and I was going out and running my errands and like, you know, it's a bright sunny day and I just want to be part of yeah, the sunshine. Yeah, it's just like, you know? we just want to bounce with yes. it. Yes. This, here's my guess. I think this is, I think now the whole house either discontinued or resold. And they had a fragrance that's called La Dendi. It's like, it looks almost like a column, a bottle. And it has a huge emblem on the bottom of it. I'm blanking on the name of the house. But I remember the, the fragrance was called La Dendi. Yes, you want to see which one this is? Yes. It's this one. Oh, I, oh my God, this is embarrassing. I went through two bottles of this already. Oh, <laughs> I'm so wrong. I oh saw that this one God. was mostly empty, so I figured oh, it would be one you liked. I am so embarrassed. Oh. Wow, I did not like you know the two very prominent notes here is dry wood and uh, kind of like plum wine. Mm -hmm. I can see that. Now. And I now I feel the one uh, the plum, but before that, sour sweet. Okay, plum wine. This is Serge Latin's iconic French niche, now owned by Shiseido. Um, Femini du Bois. It's usually how people start with Serge Latin's. There are like a few like core fragrances by that niche brand that are just charmers. Like everybody gets them. Because some of his stuff is very, very conceptual. But this is just like people love it. It's usually just so, you know, it's just like plum wine. It's just like it's... It's so cheerful and pleasant. Cheerful. How could you not love it? I know. I never thought of it as cheerful, but now it is. And it's definitely not what I was thinking about. Not at all. I'll have to compare them later. They give me the same vibe, even though I never put those two fragrances together in my mind. Huh. Wow. I do have two backups of this. That's amazing. It's just such a it's just such a go-to. Now you can feel extra cheerful the I next know. time that you put it on. I know. Oh my god. All right, the last one. The last one. The okay. finale. Oh, this was such a blow. Like, wonderful fragrance, but I can't believe I was so off the mark. Aww. The only thing that I guessed correctly is that it was niche, which is, like, <laughs> not a hard guess. It's okay. It's all right. It's okay. I'll get better. All right, here is this next one. Oh, I didn't show it to This me is yet. my last chance at redemption, guys. Last chance. Floral, powdery, mm -hmm. kind of almost, again, it's it's very reminiscent of the first few it that is. we tried, right? Like we tried the Casanova 1725, Vansay, Hartensia, um, the Delhi Light. It's this like powdery, sophisticated florals. Mm -hmm. And it's a specific floral that I am blanking on. I don't know, maybe mimosa. It's just like mm, some, it's something non-obvious. I dare say though, I, <laughs> it's gonna be horrible if it's exactly a rose. I dare say it is not rose. Cause like the most two popular floral notes in the perfumer is rose and jasmine or some version of white, flo uh, white flowers. It's similar to rose, but I don't think it's quite Rose, unless I'm Roses right. is almost everything. Like, 
it's uh, partially because there are so many different types of roses there are only a few from which you can make an actual in, uh, ingredients but in the modern perfume making almost like a lot of things are synthesized and you can just rose as a flower there are so many varieties and they can smell like almost everything oh. from fruits to fresh and zesty so like any roses that you that you've smelled before they could have like widely different olfactory profiles so in a way in a way roses have very rich spectrum oh of kind of smells they emit i never knew that so you can find nose in almost everything just by associations mm. i oh, could it be daffodil it's just like one of those non-obvious florals i dare say it's not lily it's like daffodil or like Narcissus or Tulip? Could it be Tulip? Maybe. It is similar. Maybe Mosa? So powdery, floral. Mm -hmm. The way that it's made, it reminds me of how L'Artisan Perfumer makes its florals. Oh, I just got something like a grassy mm -hmm. from this last one. Mm -hmm. Place my bets on Darcisan Perfumer making something like that. Otherwise, I mean, it could be mainstream. It could, it could. But to me, it's just like too, too elegant right, <laughs> to be <yes>. mainstream. <laughs> it definitely has that. I elegance. don't trust the taste of the majority. No, it's like running through a field in your corset and your old-fashioned yeah, story like this or little something, thing, you know? Yeah, like this just just falling off your shoulder. Mm -hmm. It almost smells like rose, but then you're like, no, it's not rose. It's something it's else. It's metallic to me. Mm -hmm. There's something that feels grassy to me. Mm. Like you're picking wildflowers or something. Don't, don't you feel like some kind of honey? Mm, yeah, yes. Oh, There's the sweetness um, that's beneath it. It's like a little... Honeysuckle. <gasps> Could it be? Maybe. You know, now that I'm thinking about my collection, I might be so wrong, but I'm still thinking it could be L'Artisan Perfumer. And if it is L'Artisan Perfumer, it could be something, something to eat, like one day, which is about linden, which smells like honeysuckle essentially honey and it has a little bit of this like metallic kind of flatter sharper edge to it which maybe to you is grassy clover maybe clover maybe okay i'm ready okay this is it this is it i guess <laughs> it is guess it is let us on perfumer uh one day dead to undo undo Somebody help me. Mm -hmm. um, and it is linden. Are you familiar with the linden tree? I don't think so. It's kind of like honeysuckle, essentially. Okay. It's it's very popular in Europe. That's where I think it grows a lot. Oh. And people collect and dry its flowers and you almost get less like hot. And that's like the linden honey is very popular. That's oh, why it okay. also smells of honey to people, but it's the vice versa. That makes the sense. The honey smells of linden. Yes. It's and so a nice. lot of people are allergic to it. To the it has to the pollen. Oh, oh no! <laughs> it's a yeah, it has, produces a lot of pollen. Oh my god! All right, how many did I get? Three. Three. I think it was three. All right. If so we yeah, good job. <laughs> <laughs> if we rank them, mm -hmm. which three would you just grab and go? Oh my goodness! So let's see. Well, I am thinking this one. Actually, Manzega Tensia. Mm -hmm. There's just something lovely about this. It's oh, romantic. It's it like is. A romance. Yes. Oh my goodness. Let's see. Um, I did really like the lilac too. It's very bright, but it's a happy feeling mm -hmm. for me. So definitely that one too. Oh my goodness, a third one. It's so hard to pick because there were several that I liked quite a bit. Um, first, like impulse right here i would say perhaps this indie tower beautiful desert one desert. yes or possibly even this one like these two okay close we're very close all right you know what i am very impressed that you picked 
like again the the those i think i'm, I'm realizing you're really like sophisticated thinly woven florals and that perfectly made sense but as a diversification what else would you pick this is like very potent rich and like luxurious it's like yes. old school luxury it's barocco in a bottle well you know sometimes you have to be a little more dramatic and other times you're picking flowers in the field yep that is a solid choice you guys well i obviously would pick all three I definitely need to uh, reacquaint myself with <laughs> Juliet's gone because I, I was a bit taken aback. And I need to wear again Femina de Bois by Serge Lutens because I thought I knew it, you know, from the, from the back to the top. I could like, I felt like I, I just knew it so well that I would guess it anywhere, anytime. And I was so wrong. I liked it, but mm -hmm. I was so wrong. So discover something new about an old favorite i guess yeah absolutely well i hope you guys enjoyed this video we are gonna chop chop run yes. and be glamorous up in the air with our uh, dress rehearsal any any parting advice any thoughts oh um play with perfumes smell them um try ones that you might not ordinarily try if i had seen you know perhaps this on the shelf i would have thought oh that's this one must be for men but I smelled it and it's delightfully feminine even though it's rich at the same time. So just try new things. You never know what scent might jump out at you and all of a sudden there's a whole new world to discover. Oh my God, we're so, so lucky to have you, Danny. Thank Aww. you so much for coming. Thank you for having me, it was so much fun. <laughs> and if you guys wanna see more videos like that, give them a like, leave a comment. If you wanna see actually a, Kind of a glimpse into our performance life that is also possible just let us know thank you so much we're gonna run i'll see we'll see well we'll hopefully see you again i'll yes. definitely see you in the next video Thank you.